So grab your keys and let Jesus take the wheel, baby, as that's what everyone else does here in Texas. Basically a GTA 5 free-for-all server here. With the best parking spot in the store, I immediately asserted my dominance by heading straight to the toy aisle. After I found something that would work for this build, I skirted my way home and thanked my car, as she has 342,000 miles. She's an absolute unit. Things you'll need. Sharpie. Glue. Razor blade. Magnets I sell on my website. And your brand new figures. Start disassembling the figures. We only need the hands and the shoulder joints for this section. I use a razor blade and I squeeze it in between these two joints. This really helps the extraction process. Right here, I am totally not using my teeth to remove the hands from this figure. Now we move towards the bottom half. We only need the cod undersuit, T-joint, and the thighs. First thing we need to do is trim off the excess pegs of the cod undersuit. We then can add my Mark V cod plate and T-joint. We trim off any extra flashing of the T-joint, which can cause assembly errors. Now grab the thighs and the new legs and carefully assemble the two. Remember to use a soft but firm twisting motion so you don't break these 3D printed parts. You can also remove the boots for extra security and then reassemble them once everything is put on. You can then slide on the Mark V thigh armor. The arms are fairly simple to build. Just push and rotate the hands onto the wrists and add those joints we took off from earlier onto the new parts. Push the wrist and shoulder together until you hear a nice click. Once finished, push your arms into the torsos and connect the waist section. From there, you can add the two legs. Here you can see the neck ball joint. The part with the support marks is the side where the ball joint should face when going into the torso. These two spheres are different sizes, so this is very important. Here, we'll add some glue to the shoulders and then add the Mark V shoulder pads. Once that is finished, we'll move towards the torsos. Here, you can see me marking one side of the magnet. This is so I don't place the magnets on the wrong side. The side with a Sharpie will have glue on it. The cool thing is these back flakes can hold two magnets on each side, increasing the overall magnetism. A razor blade is a great way to push the magnets into the back plate and the thighs, mainly because of the steel material and also the pointy tip. I will now add glue to the torso so we can secure the chest plate. I recommend you add glue to the chest armor and not the torso like I just did to avoid over applying the glue. Hold firmly for around 10 seconds. This next step is mainly for my stop motion animators slash advanced customizers. If you add glue to the joints and rapidly move the part, this helps you create a perfect mold and a nice textured grip. You have to work quickly though, as you can easily ruin your prints if done incorrectly, so use with caution. You can also use this technique for the torso's arm, creating a better fitting. Now all you have to do is put on the helmet, insert a magnet into the slot of the handle, and you are set. You just built your own custom figure. I will be converting my jetpacks and backpacks to this new magnetic system, giving y'all more abilities for customizing. This magnetic system I will be applying for all my Halo inspirational figures in the future. This all just takes time and I'm only one dude. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like and share around. If you have any other questions, put it in the comments and I'll see what I can do to help out. Thank you again, and I'm excited to see what y'all do with these parts.